Hello there, I'm Carl from uh, Quarry's Kitchen Restaurant up in the Scottish Islands near Glencoe. Um, this video is to show you how to chip potatoes and get great chips. Um, so we start off with our potatoes and this video at the time of filming is at the end of March and the problem with in the next few weeks is we're going to start getting out of last year's potatoes um, and the quality is going to start deteriorating and it'll get to, it'll get to a stage where we'll need to start um, using Spanish new potatoes which come in sort of May time and um, the problem is with that is they do have a mite on them in Spain and they have to get washed before they come here which obviously drives the cost so they're quite expensive um, and then the new English potatoes will come in about sort of June time something like that it's really good to have a good supplier of potatoes who will keep you informed of how, how the things are going throughout the year um, but that will change over the year um, okay we're going to go with the, uh, with the standard kit this is our standard fish and chip shop sort of peeling chipping kit um, we've got our bold rumbler or chipper or, or peeler here um, we've got our interceptor tank really useful to have that it keeps all the peelings stops them going down the drain that's the last thing you want is, is potato peelings going down the drain and actually in some councils for environmental health reasons they actually uh, make that a requirement we've got a wash tank here um, and we're going to go through that and then over here i've got my chipper okay so this is the bold rumbler here um, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the water on first and just to get the water going it's going to flow down into my interceptor tank i'm going to make sure the door is closed you don't want the spuds going everywhere before they're peeled pop the lid off and uh, just probably give it a bit more water here and then we're going to pick the tap tank up obviously lifting watch your back and in the potato school when we've turned it on here we go Okay, I'm going to turn the water off uh, and then we're just going to let the potato, the rumble is still going, I'm going to open the door and let the potatoes come out. I've still got one in there, I'm just going to close the door, turn it off, I'm going to make sure it stops spinning and then I'll just pick that, that one out that I can't get out. This isn't a full bag obviously, uh, but that's the sort of condition they're going to come out in. Don't over rumble them. If you over rumble, you're going to start losing some of your profit. You're washing that profit down the drain. So don't over rumble. These are probably a little bit slightly overdone. Um, it's been in about, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds because I've not put so many in. It's obviously rumbled a bit quicker. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rinse hose here. I'm just going to rinse off the starch. So give them a good rinse. And as you can see, these potatoes, pretty good potatoes. These are the quality of these are excellent. We've got a good supplier. Um, but like I say, these will start deteriorating in the next few months. Um, there's the odd eye here, I've got a little eye there, things like this, I'm not too fussed about those, um, just grab a knife. So I'll take a little bit of an eye out there, but I don't want to lose too much of the potato. Some people prefer a potato peeler, I prefer a knife, it's up to you. Um, but we'll get rid of things like that, but most of it is, is in pretty good shape. I'm just going to chop that out, it's a bit deeper than I thought. There you go. But most of it, it's just the odd little thing like that, just get rid of that. Um, and everything else looks pretty good. Here we are, this is the uh, the bowl chipper here. Um, so what we're going to do, we've got an on button here. So I'm just going to check the on button. Um, power's on there as well. So that's the on button, it's quite noisy. Um, obviously this is dangerous. Be very careful, train your staff before they start using this kind of stuff. Um, underneath it, I've got the bowl bucket. This is a, a dry white bucket. You can get these from dry white, excellent piece of kit on the wheels. Um, uh, it's really useful. And I've actually put a little bit of water in here just to, when it comes out, just to get rid of that starch a little bit. I'm gonna come over, grab my potatoes. It's nice and easy, nice and quick. In the go. Just keep chucking them in there. Now 
turn it back off again. Um, and there you go, so we've got them into the bucket and uh, these are sort of great chips down here. And they're just coming up really nice. Okay, so that's them in the bucket. You can see the, the water here is uh, quite milky here. This is all the starch. We don't want that in. It's gonna brown your chips and it's gonna actually deteriorate your oil as well. Um, so I've got them in there, give them a good rinse. Um, obviously this is only a half bucket, it's not a full bucket. And then I'm gonna come down, take the bung out of this and it just dribbles out. And I'm just gonna let it sort of drain a little bit. Um, so once it's all drained, then I'm gonna give it another rinse uh, and then I'll drain it one more time. Um, after that one more time, I'll just leave it open and let it drain for at least an hour. I want nice dry chips. You don't want sort of water in your, in your range there. Um, some people use dry white. Um, we tend to get through a lot. So if we've got a full bucket, that goes pretty quickly. So actually we found we've, we've actually stopped using dry white. Um, but if you've got a bucket that's half full and you're going to take your time with it, it might be best to put a bit of dry white in there. It'll just stop your chips going a bit brown before you get them in the range. Okay, so uh, this is our range here. We've got a Florigo range. Um, it's pretty brand new. Uh, it's only 12 months old, if that. Um, the good thing is with the new modern ranges is, is um, the old days you used to pop your chips in and the temperature would drop. Um, these, the recovery is so so quick that it's uh, you hardly notice any difference at all. Um, in our chip shop, we're in the Scottish Islands here, so we don't get access to sort of plum uh, online gas. So we are actually an electric range here, which that's uh, not been too bad at price wise. It's sort of balanced up with LPG, which is what we can get up here. Um, so this is an electric range. Um, OK, um, so there's our range. Um, there's our chips. They've been drying for an hour, something like that. You can see they're quite white still, so they're not too bad. Um, but if any longer, then you'd start thinking about putting some dry white in there. Chips in, into the basket, into the fryer. So temperature there, that's telling me 186, about 180 is where you want to be. And I've got my timer here. I like timers. Um, we're a busy shop, fish and chip shop, so you kind of want the timers going. So we'll start that, six minutes for a good chip, uh, and we'll just let it fry off for six minutes. Okay, so we, uh, we've got about a 30 seconds left. I'll give the chips, just check, see they're okay. Um, don't play with them too much, give them a sugar every now and again just to separate them. Um, but uh, that's how it's going. Uh, you'll see the range, it didn't drop at all. It, it was 186 when we put it in and it went down to 181. In the old days, that is just incredible. There's no way you can get down to that sort of temperature. So the recovery for this is fabulous, it really is. Um, okay, so we're about here and the beef is just gonna go off. That's telling me six minutes. Um, open the chip box here. Give them a sugar. You don't want sort of greasy chips, so get the get the excess fat off. Uh, in you go. Put that out of the way. Uh, that's the chip there. We'll just let that cool. Um, I'll just chit chat about the oil. We're using palm oil here, sustainable palm oil. Um, it's up to you. Some, some fish and chip shops use beef dripping. Um, some use just basic vegetable oil. I will say it's worth paying the extra money for quality um, cooking product. Um, the better your pays, the better your product's going to be at the end and the more your customers are going to come back. Um, that's the chip there now. So I've just let it dry. You can see it's a crisp chip, really hard outside and the chip itself inside is nice and soft. Um, a good test of the chips, by the way, is if you just take it and you can just peel off that skin and it should just peel all the way around and then that will leave you just a little square of chip inside. That's telling me that's a good chip. Easy peasy, that's how you make good chips.